Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Mitz TV by Bessa San Diego, a Mitzvah Event Specialist Association. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. Now on with the show. And another big hello to everybody that is watching today. We thank you so much for tuning in again. Today we're gonna have a special episode where we're gonna be doing a makeup tutorial. So Beauty by Heather is gonna be here in the house and she's giving us a quick makeup tutorial on an easy breezy summer look. Check it out. Hi guys, so today I'm gonna to teach you a quick summertime look. Obviously, I already have my foundation and concealer on in an effort to save time. I would suggest using something with sunscreen or for sure to put your sunscreen on as your primer. And um, I did a tiny bit of contouring with um, a cream product, but I'm gonna go back over it with a bronzer. So let's start with the eyes. And as always, we're going to start with an eye base. So using um, the eye base of your choice and just in an effort to stay san sanitary, I would suggest putting it on the back of your hand or onto a palette, and then you can either use your fingers or a brush and just spread it evenly all over your lid from the lash line up to the brow bone. And I already curled my lashes, again, in an effort to save time since my videos always end up being way longer than I want them to be. So now we're basically just creating a canvas for our shadow. So after I apply my primer, I go back over it with a powder or oops, just a lightweight uh, or a light color shadow. Like today, I'm going to use this shadow right here. It's a uh, Trish McAvoy White Linen. And I would just use a very fluffy brush and you wanna get most of it into the crease portion because that's where it's really important that you are able to blend it easily. And I'm actually gonna put some on the brow bone as well because that's the color that I would use on my brow bone. And then I'm going to take this color here. It's a rose quartz, um, but just something in like the rose family or the pink family. And I'm going to take a flat brush like so, and I'm just going to press it onto the lid. And I'm bringing it up into the crease. So any sort of flat brush will work, but you wanna use something that's dense so that it really packs the color on. That's how you'll get more payoff, which is what we're going for. And then I'm just blending that same color up into the crease. And if your eyes are hooded like mine, you'll want to bring the crease color a little bit higher than maybe you normally would. So we're just lifting the socket. You can do that by just looking straight ahead and then blending it into the crease. Next, I'm going to take this light color again with my fluffy brush, and I'm just going to diffuse the edges to blend. So you could either leave it like this for daytime, um, more if you want to add more for nighttime or for day. I'm now going to take this purple color here and I'm going to get the excess off on the back of my hand. And that also helps to work the shadow into the brush. And then I'm just going to pat it right here in the outer V. And I'm bringing it up onto the brow bone and out to the side, which is a nice technique if your eyes are shaped like mine. And even if they're not, it still is kind of nice to bring it out to the side to give you more of that almond shape. So I'm patting it once more just to get more payoff. And then I'm going to take it right into that outer corner here and up below the eye. And then I'm going to take the excess off on, the, on a Kleenex and I'm going to go back into that rose color and sweep it underneath the eye from the middle to the inner corner, kind of blending into that purple color. So that's all I'm gonna do for shadow. As you can see, it's just a really pretty light, um, everyday but nice summer, summer evening look. But I am going to use some liner to help bring my eyes out a little bit more. And as always, I suggest sharpening your pencil before you use it because that takes the outer surface off of the pencil, which cleans the pencil. But then again, it's important also to be cleaning your sharpeners 
you can soak them in alcohol and that will kill most, most bacteria. Okay, so I am just going to take this along the lash line as close as possible. And this is just a great way to make the lashes look thicker as well. And then if you want, you can take a brush or I now have these uh, disposable eyeliner brushes that I'm going to be experimenting with on my clients. And they're a little sharp, which is good and bad. You have to be gentle, but it's nice because if you want to get a little flick, it's really easy with something like this. And then I'm actually also going to take this liner along the waterline. And that brings eyes out even more. Okay, so tiny little hash marks all the way from the inner corner to the outer corner. And then taking your eyeliner brush or disposable. I mean, if you're doing your own makeup, obviously you can use your own brushes, but I'm transitioning into as many disposable brushes as I can, at least for right now. Okay, and then taking it into the water, water line. Those aren't bad, actually. That's all I'm gonna do for liner. And mascara, taking it as close to the lash line as possible, a little wiggle, and drawing it up to the tips. Okay. And I'm a fan of putting mascara on the upper and lower lashes, but you should do what works for you. I like it because I think it makes my eyes look bigger when I have it on the lower lashes, but everyone's different. Okay. And then if you want, you can add some individuals at the outer corners for nighttime, but for day, obviously in the summer, you probably wouldn't, um, especially for a summertime look. Now we are going to move into bronzer. So I'm going to take a flat brush like so, and I'm going to dip it into the dark side of my bronzer, and I'm just going to sculpt by bringing it underneath my cheekbone and then blending up. So that's a really great way to blend. And as I mentioned, I already had powder on, so that also makes it easier to blend. And then bringing it along the jawbone and up along the hairline. Blush. I'm using a bright blush, which I think is really pretty for summer. And I'm bringing it onto my cheek, also my cheeks, but I'm bringing it up along the cheekbone as well. And then I'm going to grab my bronzer brush again and just kind of blend both of those together. And then you can also take a little bit of your bronzer and sweep it down the sides of the nose and along the bridge of the nose, along the jawline, and it wouldn't be a summer look without a little highlighter. So I am going to take a really sparkly highlighter and I'm gonna use a brush like this. It's a little denser than I usually use for a highlight, but I wanna get a lot of shimmer, shimmer on my cheekbones. And then I'm gonna put a little on the tip of my nose and onto the cupid bow. I'm also going to bring it up onto the brow bone. And you can bring it above the brows as well. Just gives you a nice summer glow. And then for lips, I already have um, a little bit of lip balm on right now that has um, some pink undertones. So I'm going to just use a nude pencil on top of it. I sharpened my pencil, again, sanitizing, and then I'm going to accentuate my cupid's bow and the lower lip. And then I'm gonna color it in. And for a summer look, you might wanna just kind of diffuse the edges of your lip line just to give it a little bit more of a casual look. And then last but not least, brows, combing them into place. 
And then just filling in the sparse areas. I think a thunder ball can be a little less bold, just kind of more wispy and light, just to frame the eyes, but not distract. Not to, you don't want them to be too heavy. And then that's the final look. So thanks for watching guys and I'll uh, see you. That was fantastic. So such a great, easy summer look. And so Heather Arnold is actually gonna be joining us today. So, hey, Heather. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I am doing pretty well. I, I um, this, this tutorial was wonderful. So in a past life, I was actually a makeup artist. Oh, I don't really? talk about it much. Oh, yes. And so I'm just wondering all kinds of things. So, okay, um, so this was great. So this was a nice, easy summer look for people to do. So if you watch this summer look and you liked it, you guys can rewind and do this along with her one more time. Or you guys can give Heather a call because you do these virtually. They exactly. do a virtual tutorial. Right. So when they were, if they somebody wants to book that with you, is that something, how long does that usually take? Um, well, in a perfect world, world, I'd like to have an hour. Okay. But um, if people don't have that, you know, we can easily do it in 45 minutes. And um, the most important thing, believe it or not, is the lighting. Okay. So um, I would, you know, what what I would intend to do is talk to the person ahead of time and just talk to them about where they're going to set up. Because, I mean, in a perfect world, natural light is great, but if you don't have natural light, you can just use a lamp and just put it right in front of your face. And then that way I can see what the person I'm doing the virtual lesson with is doing. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, usually I have a conversation with them ahead of time, find out what look they want to learn how to do and then i ask them what makeup they have and in most cases i'm able to work with whatever they have i mean if there's something like that's crucial to the look that they're going for that they don't have they can you know i'll give some suggestions as to what they can pick up ahead of time absolutely so i have a couple questions here about from in the beginning you said um so people can prime their face now Another question there I actually had is, is you said that you can use sunscreen as your primer. Um, is there a certain type that you would push people towards water-based or what, what exactly should they look for if they're looking for a sunscreen to use um, base? Well, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, if you're going to be taking pictures, you need to make sure that the sunscreen is not higher than a 15 SPF because um, then in your photos, you'll have what's called flashback. So you'll actually see like white, oh. white spots or white, like a cast of white on the face. So obviously we don't want that. So, um, and then other than that, it depends on the skin type. So if you're really oily, you want to choose a sunscreen that's oil free. Um, if you're drier, you can use something more hydrating. Um, okay. so. And so, and then from there, like when it comes to your foundation, like how would you pick, um, to powder, a liquid, a cream base? What do you, right. what, what is, what is, what is your. The same concept, um, that it depends on the skin type. So if you have oily skin, um, powders can work. Um, a liquid foundation can work as long as it has what's called a semi-matte or matte finish. Um, if you have real dry skin, I would avoid a powder, but I would suggest either um, a tinted moisturizer, which is real hydrating and will give you a little bit more um, of a glow, which for dry skin can be very flattering. Um, or you could use a liquid foundation that has um, you know, you can pretty much get away with any liquid foundation, but you might, if you have dry skin, you might want to use a liquid foundation that wasn't super matte because that will make you look dry. Absolutely. And then, so from there, we get to see how to put on the face. So go ahead and rewind back and you guys can watch Heather do this tutorial again. And then, so I have some questions though about after. So 
Um, what are some tips that we can use now, especially in the summertime and when we know we're going to be a little bit more warm to keep the makeup from melting off your skin? Like, how do we- Great question. Okay, so first off, um, the primer that you use has a lot to do with the staying power of the makeup. So in a situation where you're going to be outside and it's hot and you feel like you're gonna maybe perspire, you'd want to use a primer that has um, a mattifying effect. So there's certain primers out there that help with oil control. So I would suggest that, but if you have dry skin, you don't really have to worry about the oil control element of it, but a primer, a traditional primer would be helpful. Um, and then after you're done with your makeup, be sure to use a powder, a translucent powder to set the makeup and that also helps it from um, melting off of the face. And then there's one last step that you can do. I do this for my clients going to events or for sure my bridal clients, it's a setting spray. So I like to call it schlack for the skin. I mean, it basically just, you spray it and it nothing moves afterwards. Absolutely. So um, now I know that some sometimes, uh, is there a general rule of to choose from for like the eye color, like your eyeshadow? Do you have any rules for that? Or is that something that people can kind of just rock and roll and go on their own? Um, so sometimes people just have like certain colors they want to use for a variety of reasons, um, depending like maybe if they're doing like a photo shoot and they know that they're gonna be wearing certain colors, they want the eye makeup to coordinate with the clothes that they're gonna be wearing. But other other times, the client just wants to bring out the color in their eyes. So for example, someone with really bright blue eyes, if you use warm neutrals, when I say neutral, I usually mean browns, or um, that those, colors really enhance or make the blue pop. If you have hazel eyes, using some pinks and purples, that will really help bring out the, the green in the eyes, which, you know, if people have hazel eyes, that's usually what they're trying to achieve. So um, it involves like really kind of getting to know the client, having a dialogue ahead of time, finding out what it is about their features they want to enhance. And then I choose the, the shadow colors based on that. And, okay. and then, like I said, a lot of times they'll have a preference. Like some clients really like grays. Other clients, they don't want grays, they want brown. So. Yeah, so um, it's just kind of meeting them in the middle of what they need and then also kind of what they want. Yeah. And you as the professional, you can kind of say, well, let's go in this direction. Let's open that eye up and let's use this color. And so, right. yeah, so I completely get that. So I'm going to ask you two more quick questions here. Okay. And then I'm going to, because I don't want to take up too much of your time today. And so another one of these questions that I had here was, um, if they, if somebody was choosing uh, to take a couple makeup brushes with them when they need to leave the house for the summertime look to maintain sure. this, what are you suggesting for them to, if they have a little fanny pack, what are we putting in that fanny pack for the summer day? Okay, so um, for sure you want to have a brush to apply your foundation or tinted moisturizer. And I would suggest something like this. Um, it's, you know, very dense brush. So um, it, it deposits a lot of, product onto the skin, which means that you don't have to use too much. So I really like something like this. Um, I would also suggest a powder brush. So if you're someone that's going to only be using powder as your foundation, we talked about that earlier, you can use this brush for that. But if you're using the tinted moisturizer or the foundation, this is how you're going to apply your translucent powder, just to mattify the skin, especially down the center of the face. So these two for sure. Um, you can use this for your blush also. So this kind of is multi-purpose. You could also use it for your bronzer. So mm -hmm. just this powder brush is great. And then for the eyes, 
Um, I really love having a shadow brush like this one. Oh. It's kind of a fluffy, but it, it can be, you can you do this, a lot of different techniques with a brush like this. So really for eyes, you could get away with just having something like this. You really wouldn't need anything else. Um, so that would really be it. I love that. So it's, it's one of those really things too, it looks products. like. Or three brushes. Yeah, and it looks like too, like one of the things that I kind of like rung out to me too when you were saying that a dense brush like that one that you're using for your um, your, your cream, yeah, your cream foundations and whatnot, that that is going to give you a bigger deposit of makeup on the skin. So actually, in the long run, it probably will save you some money on products because exactly. You're using stuff. Okay, exactly. so that's what I'm, that's what I took that to mean. Okay, cool. Yes. So we're on the same track there, and then. Uh, so and then one other thing would be that you, when you were doing the eye, uh, when you're doing your eye liner there, it seemed that it like glides really, really nicely. Is there a tip that you would give people yes. when they purchase their eyeliner? What would you say? Well, okay, so there's a couple different liners out there. There's a, there's, you can buy a gel liner and those are nice because they do move really easily, but they dry. So, um, you know, you have a little bit of time before it dries. If you want to take a brush and blend it, you can. But once it dries, that's it, which is nice in the summer because it won't transfer onto your lid or it, it won't smudge as easily, which is something you want to keep in mind for summer. Um, the other thing is if you're just going to use a traditional liner, I don't have mine in here, but you want to make sure that you sharpen it before you use it because sharpening it, not only does it sanitize, as I mentioned in the video, but it also softens the pencil so it makes it glide on easier. And um, if you're just applying makeup to yourself, you can even take the liner and just run it along your hand. And by doing that, it warms the liner up also, which will make it glide on easier. Absolutely. Now okay, I can't yeah. do that now when I do clients makeup because we're no longer, you know, we're wearing gloves, A. Eh? But yeah. we're also getting away from using our hand as a palette. We're now using a traditional metal palette. So the warming up of the product is no longer a thing from a makeup artist standpoint. But uh, if you're applying it on yourself, go for it. Absolutely. So I love these tips. So this has been a really insightful day today. And it's actually a little, a little fun here with our bets, uh, with, with our Miss TV. So um, yeah. today we got a nice practical tutorial in. And so I think this is wonderful. So yet another, yeah, thank you so much. This is like a yet another uh, professional master in the Bessel organization that is bringing us some real know-how. And so remember that you guys can always book uh, Beauty by Heather. Yeah. Um, you guys can find that information. It was scrolling on the ticker down below, and you guys can also find that on the bestofsandiego.com website where you can find all of our vendors. Uh, and I would not hesitate to reach out to Heather if you guys have questions and if you guys want to book anything. So remember yeah. right now too is that as things are opening up is that you know she's going to be taking different uh, protocols into how right. she's going to be setting those those appointments up with you. But then also she's providing a really nice service of doing a virtual tutorial where you can kind of almost like how like the housewives and all these other reality stars, they're doing their own makeup via you know, Skype with their makeup artist and they get themselves all ready. So you can kind of give yourself a little beauty treatment there like all of the stars from home. That's right, <laughs> so, that's right. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank and you. So, absolutely, thank you. so we are going to take a break here and we're gonna play a quick game of Name That Movie Poster. This one's gonna be Superhero Edition. This is by SoCal Green Screen.
Okay, I personally did not get that one. I see black leather and I'm always thinking Batman. First thing that always pops into my head. So I hope you guys had a good time today here with Mitz TV by Bessa San Diego. Today we had that tutorial by Beauty by Heather. Go ahead and check out the description below. Please like this episode and remember to subscribe to Bessa San Diego on YouTube. Thanks so much and have a great day.